You will need the motion capture files and you will need the description of your robot in either Mujico format or URDF format. Motion capture files, they should roughly correspond to your robot. So for example, if you have a humanoid robot, then it should be human movements, like for me with Atlas. Or if you have uh, a quadruped robot, then it should be some movement from animals such as a cat or a dog. The first thing you'll need to do is a so-called skeleton and the T pose for your robot. There is a Python converter script to convert the URDF or Mujico file to a skeleton in a T pose. T pose means something like a T0 or the default pose. So let's do that for Atlas. Now we're going from the roots of uh, the Isaac Jim folder and I cloned Isaac Jim environment inside of it. And then from here, the script is called njcf importer, and uh, you'll need to specify the path to either your URDF or your Mujico file. In this case, I have the Atlas, right? So, okay, so let's execute it. Here's a T pose of Atlas now, that was made according to URDF, and here are the node names attention to them we actually will see them later for example lower torso is node index one and so on and so forth you can press the button q to exit it and perfect this is saved on the tasks and p pose leap data here you see atlas version 4 with multi-sense numpy this numpy array has your robot skeleton in a t pose then we will need to retarget the motion file we have from a source skeleton to a target skeleton. Basically, it means that the motion file, it has specific names for the bones and specific sizes of the bones, which are different between two different skeletons. Probably. Very likely. And this is what the script does. There is a lot of heavy mass here, but in essence, it just takes the corresponding bones and joints and retarget the motion to your desired skeleton. So let's run that script. It's also in pose leap. It's here. Python retarget motion. We have the motion config emu to atlas. We actually specify the source motion here as a common line argument. I made this small improvement. And there's a source pose, source T pose, target T pose. This is the one that we actually just made now in a previous step. And the source pose for Carnegie Mellon University, they actually already have it. There is a joint mapping, which joints of the source skeleton correspond to which joint of the target skeleton. Um, and there are some other settings. Rotations most of the time does not need to be changed and neither does scale. We specify the movement and we also append Y to the end to see the visualization. So you can use W, X to play the movement. It actually looks quite reasonable, although you would see that there is something wrong with the upper body. You can press Q to save the movement. The segmentation fault part is actually related to visualization, I think, which is not a good sign, but it works. It saved the movement as another numpy array. Let me find it for you, by the way. It's here, this one. It was saved as uh, 0701CMU Atlas numpy. It contains the sequence of the motion capture retargeted to your robot skeleton. And from there, you will need to change a few things in code, obviously and the configuration files. Let's find two main pieces of the code used here. This is Atlas AMP base and Atlas AMP. Atlas AMP actually is reading the motion capture files and creates observations from them. And then Atlas AMP base loads the robot, creates the environment and gets the observations for the robots. And if you remember, we have the discriminator which compares the observations from the motion capture files and from the robots. So this is why there are two parts. Well, originally in the original NVIDIA example, it was structured like that. There will be a few things. Most importantly, when you're applying it to a new robot, you will see this create environment and then there is an asset file. So the path to asset file is in the config as Atlas AMP. You'll need to change that asset file name to one of your robots. Again, it could be Mujico or it could be a URDF. There is something called the termination hate. 
here and set to 0 0.5, but it will actually depend on your robot, the exact value here, and you can change it. Actually, the code for this function is in the end of the file here. It's compute humanoid reset. Basically, the robots will be terminated before the end of the round if any part of its body except for feet in this case or the contact body IDs uh, will make contact with the ground. So if it touches, for example, with its head, the ground, and also if its root height is higher or lower than certain value, it means it has fallen or it is flying. So here's the termination height value. And it will be different for different robots. Also, we have the joint of said dictionary, which was the most difficult and the most painful part to figure out because in the original code, it was not a dictionary. It was just two lists and there was absolutely no explanation on which number corresponds to which number. So I spent quite a lot of time and hopefully this will make more sense. This dictionary contains a mapping of offsets. Here are the joint offsets of your robot and they are mapped to body IDs of a target skeleton. You saw those body IDs just now here and then you'll be able to see Let's go down. Here we have torso. So our robot has three joints for the torso, zero, one, and two. And they're all mapped to a lower torso node. What it means in practice that the set degrees of freedom of the lower torso node will be compared to the current degree of freedom of these joints of the robot. And I recommend you to play around a little bit with it. First, of course, use Atlas or the Humanoid. Both of these examples work in my repository to actually have a clear idea of how this works. But in essence, there are three main blocks that you will definitely need to change for your robot. And then from there, um, you will have to kind of figure it out yourself. I recommend you use weights and biases, made some changes, tweaks to the configuration to enable both login to weights and biases and also capture in the videos. It's really, really essential to have that. I'm not affiliated with them, but I just feel it makes life so much easier when you are able to track all your experiments. And when you have hundreds of them, and believe me, I had hundreds of experiments, then just comparing it like that on a simple dashboard, including the videos of the final policy, that really helps. Yeah, you will need to tweak it, rinse and repeat, and sooner or later, you will have the working policy. And it would be a good starting point for you if you want to teach your robot locomotion and certain movements. If you found this useful, then make sure to go and watch a video about Beetle to find out more about reinforcement learning in robotics and, most importantly, some ideas how you can transfer what the policy has learned in the simulation to a real robot. Or if LLMs or large language models are more of your thing, then there is a video about a talking toaster.